Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ, located at 2535 Shore Road in Northfield, New Jersey. And I would like to take this opportunity to <coughs> welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, <coughs> November the 6th. We will be singing several songs, observing the Lord's Supper. And I hope that I have a message that uh, will be helpful to each one of you. We sing from the song uh, songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. I will give you the number. I'll give you the title of the song in case you don't have this book. And uh, you can either Google the song or if you have a different book, you can turn to that book. And uh, hopefully you can sing along with us. The first song that we will sing is number 477 in Songs of Faith and Praise. The title of this song is There is a Place of Quiet Rest. There is a place of quiet rest, number 477. <clears throat> there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest Near to the heart of God Oh, Jesus, bless me, Redeemer Sent from the heart of God Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet, near to the heart of God. A place where we, our Savior, meet Near to the heart of God O oh, Jesus, bless me, Redeemer Sad from the heart of God Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of full release, near to the heart of God. A place where all is joy and peace, near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. Number 898, lively song. I hope we can do it justice with two of us. It's called Paradise Valley, 898, Paradise Valley. <laughs> As I travel through life with the trouble and strife, I have a glorious hope, give, give cheer on the way. Soon my toil will be o'er, and I'll rest on that shore where the night has been turned into day. 
Up in the beautiful Paradise Valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose tinted garden, deep shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. As I roam the hillside, or I listen to the tide. As I pluck the sweet, sweet flowers that grow in the veil of ink, picture is there of a land bright and fair where perennial flowers never fail. Up in the beautiful paradise valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose tinted garden neath the shade of the evergreen tree. Long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. Though your garden is rare, it is not to compare with the flowers that bloom in the garden above. In the midst of it grows Sharon's perfect sweet rose. Tis the wonderful flower of love. Up in the valley, the paradise valley, by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley, will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose-tinted garden, neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley, where the beauty of heaven I'll see. And before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 350. 350, when my love for Christ grows weak. <clears throat> We'll sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. 1, 2, 4, and 5. When my love for Christ grows weak, when for deeper faith I seek, then in thought I go to thee. Garden of Gethsemane, there I walk on in the shades, while the lingering twilight fades. See that suffering, friendless one, weeping, praying. There alone, there behold his agony, suffered on the bitter tree. See his anguish, see his death, love triumphant, still in then to life I turn again, learning all the worth of pain, learning all the might that lies in a full self-sacrifice. It is this time that we observe the Lord's Supper, as we are instructed to do each first of the day, first day of the week, 
specifically in Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, that says that they met together on the first day of the week and they broke bread. Jesus did this with his disciples uh, the night in which he was betrayed. And uh, he explained to them about his body and about his blood. The Apostle Paul reiterated that in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And in those scriptures, uh, Jesus explained uh, what the body and the blood meant. Uh, we know that uh, uh, Jesus gave himself up physically uh, as he was uh, physically born as a person, uh, uh, suffering all of the things that a human being can suffer, yet being of divine nature as the Son of God. But when he hung on that cross, he felt the pain, he felt the agony rack through his body as his hands and his feet were nailed to that cruel cross. And so as we take of the bread, let's think of the pain and the agony of his body. Let's pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're uh, so grateful that in your divine plan, you put together this perfect uh, scenario for, for us sending your son to earth, uh, his teaching uh, that was oh so wise, and yet his cruel death in which we uh, find redemption in our lives. We just thank you for that perfect sacrifice that Jesus made. And as we partake of the bread, we remember uh, his body. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says, in like manner, they took the cup. And uh, we know that it is uh, the life-giving, uh, it is the representation of the life-giving blood uh, that is in all of our bodies, the blood that Jesus shed. This was special blood. The blood that Jesus said shed was for our redemption. It was to wash away our sins. And so as we partake of the fruit of the vine, let's remember him, uh, the blood flowing from his hands and his feet and his head and his side. Let's pray. We just give you thanks to your heavenly father that Jesus was willing to shed his innocent blood that we might live. We know that in that blood we find redemption. We know that in that blood that we find forgiveness. So as we partake, let's remember those things. Let's make them have an impact on each of our lives. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The Lord's Supper is completed, but we're also reminded in our Bibles that uh, there is a time for us to give back to the Lord that with which we have been blessed we're told that uh, uh, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. We're reminded of that uh, woman in the temple who gave those two small pennies that she had. Uh, and we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that as we give, we would give as we have purposed in our heart, that it is not uh, just a haphazard thing that we do, but it is a thing that we have planned, that we lay by in store that we give back to the Lord. Let's pray. We thank you so much, dear Heavenly Father, that we uh, are able to give back to you uh, that which is yours anyway. We understand that we come into this world with nothing and we will leave with nothing. But we know that the church here on earth lives on, that your kingdom here has purpose. It has purpose to evangelize the world. It has purpose to help those who are in need. It has purpose to lift the brethren. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, that these monies would be used for those purposes, that your church would be glorified. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And the last song 
we'll sing is number 479. It is peace, perfect peace. Peace, perfect peace, 479. Peace, perfect peace, in this dark world of sin, the blood of Jesus whispers peace within, peace, perfect peace, by thronging duties press to do the will of Jesus this is rest. Peace, perfect peace with sorrow surging on Jesus, bosom not but calm is found. It is enough, the struggle soon shall cease. And Jesus calls us to heaven's perfect peace. I hope uh, you all got the opportunity to sing along with us. I know that I was uplifted by singing. I hope that you were too. And that we praise the Lord that we... We are instructed to praise the Lord. You might have uh, noticed a, a kind of a, a theme during the course of these songs, and that theme is peace. And if you were uh, attending worship uh, this morning, uh, hopefully you noticed that the uh, lesson this evening uh, was entitled The Peace of God. You know, uh, there's... So much turmoil in the world. And so within that turmoil, we always think uh, it is always somewhere in there that uh, there would be peace in this world. Uh, but the peace that we're talking about is more than the absence of war. It is more than nations uh, learning how to function together with one another to be at peace what a what a wonderful thought what a what a comforting thought that we can be at peace in our lives wouldn't it be nice to know that each of us each and every one of us can have peace and wouldn't you uh, like to not have to worry about the cares of life, you know, for, for just a little while, if it will? Of course we would. Of course we would like to have peace in our lives. And that even though things swirl around us, even though world events swirl around us, even though we're in an election season when uh, there is turmoil uh, for weeks and weeks with candidates talking about why you should vote for them and why not uh, for other people. And with all of that swirling around us, would it surprise you to know that the scriptures tell us that we can have peace. Many of you who know me know that uh, my favorite book in the New Testament is the book of Philippians. And some of my favorite scriptures are found in the book of Philippians. And I chose one particular scripture in Philippians uh, chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. 
The Apostle Paul here refers to the peace of God. And he refers to it in such a way that it passes all understanding. Some version says it passes, surpasses all comprehension that takes it to the next level. And as we read this scripture, the wonder and the, uh, for me is that you and I can have this peace. It's offered. The blessings of God are offered. However, understand there are conditions to be met if we are to have this peace. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, let's notice the words. Rejoice always in the Lord. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. These verses are so uplifting to me. But the clincher that has to do with the lesson and these conditions are the ones that lead to the final clincher in verse 7 that says, if you follow these commands, it says that the peace of God that passes all comprehension will be yours the peace that we would all, all like to have in our lives. First, it says rejoice in the Lord. Very often when I preach or when I taught, when I wanted to make a point and I thought it was rather important, sometimes I stated the point twice. Uh, to me, that indicated that this was really important. It was important enough for me to state it and then to restate it. And that's what the Apostle Paul did here. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Seems to me that this rejoicing thing is important. It was important enough for Paul to say it twice. Now, did you notice that he did not, he did not qualify it? In other words, he didn't say rejoice always. And I say again, rejoice as long as things are going okay in your life. Doesn't say that. He doesn't qualify it. He just says rejoice and again rejoice. It means that this rejoicing is to happen at all times in our life. Oh, oh wait a minute now. There are certainly certain time, certain times in our lives when it's more difficult to quote rejoice than others. How about when things aren't going so well? How about when we're ill? How about when someone near to us is ill? How about when somebody who uh, all of us cares for uh, dies? Do you know what? Paul does not qualify the rejoicing. It means that even in bad times, right along with the good times, we can rejoice in the Lord. And right along with rejoicing in the good times, we can rejoice in the bad times. Why? Well, if you follow the scripture, it says after, it says rejoice twice. It says let your gentle spirit 
be known of all men. Now, only the person who truly rejoices in the Lord can let their gentle spirit be known to all men. Only the person that can rejoice in the Lord, even at difficult times, is able to let his or her gentle spirit be known and be seen by everyone. And when they, we, they see that gentle spirit, even in a time that uh, just doesn't say to us, this is a time of rejoicing, we, we see in that person that they have peace in their life. They have enough peace in their life that they see that we can still rejoice in the Lord regardless of whether things aren't going the way we would like them to go. And why can we do that? Well, let's continue in the scripture. After it says, uh, let your gentle spirit be known to all men, it says the Lord is near. And so no matter what, no matter whether we are in good times or ma matter if we are in uh, a time of persecution or a time of hardship, the Lord is near. And, and it's actually, you know, almost saying to us, I know you're suffering. I know this is a time when you might not want to hear all of this. But he says, don't let this get to you. Don't let this get to you. Now, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount uh, stated this so beautifully in Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses 25 to 34. He said, for this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth more than they? And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow, and they do not toil, and they do not spin. Yet I say to you, not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. Do not worry then saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. And then we have the signature verse in the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And he caps it off in verse 34 by saying, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Wow. Just remembering that the Lord is near. He's not far away. That he says, don't worry about these hard times. You know, we, we might struggle with those hard times, but we can't let them win. The Lord provides the victory for each one of us. Don't let the hard times drive a wedge between you and your God. Know that he's always there. He's always there to lend a helping hand. And if you approach him with confidence, that's what it says. It says, 
but by everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. This is us, us approaching God. If we are to truly rejoice, if we are truly to find peace, we must always approach God. And so Paul says, let your requests be made known to God. And he says, do it with an attitude of prayer, respectful prayer, prayer of thanksgiving. And even then, even when we pray for grace to help in times of need, there is reason to offer thanks. There is no prayer in which it is inappropriate to offer thanks. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, the Hebrew writer says, Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. He wraps it up in a nice, neat package, doesn't he? To be at peace? What a lovely thought. It is, isn't it? What would you do to be at peace? You know, sometimes our minds are in such a turmoil. They're swirling about with who knows what things. And it's at that time where we need to take a step back and rejoice always in the Lord so that we show his gentle spirit with the knowledge that the Lord is near and let our requests be known of God with supplication, with thanksgiving. And it is then the peace of God that surpasses all comprehension will be given to us. It's all he asks. It is conditional. That is what it will take complete and unconditional surrender to God. And that will ensure that there are no worries in life that will be able to overcome you. Let your worry go and let God give you the peace that passes all comprehension. There's a saying out there. I think that AA uses this saying. It says, let go and let God. What wonderful, comforting words. And so I just pray that each of you uh, can find peace in your life. And the peace that passes all understanding, I believe, is available to us as children of God. He offers it to us as his children. If you're not a child of God, if you haven't uh, fulfilled his requirements of obedience, if you haven't confessed that Jesus is the Son of God and repented of your former life and been baptized for the remission of your sins, uh, this rejoicing, this peace that passes all comprehension cannot be within you. If you need that this evening, please let us know. We are at your beck and call and we will help and we will be there, and we will hopefully fulfill your need. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the time that we had together this evening. I just pray that some of the words that were spoken, the songs that were sung, and the observance of the Lord's Supper was pleasing to you. I hope that we can take some of these words with us for the evening. Look at them, look at the scriptures, look at Philippians chapter four, verses four through seven, and see how powerful those words are in our lives. I pray that you will continue to bless us and comfort us. Help us to always remember that you are near and that we can rejoice in you always. Yes, rejoice that we might find that peace that passes all understanding. Continue to bless us, be with us, guide us, direct our paths. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. I want you to be all safe. Uh, remember, Tuesday is election day. Uh, as Americans, we have the opportunity to vote. 
please get out and vote. May God bless you all.